Hello and welcome to Gravity Global, where we help you stay accountable to your language goals. Now it's a brand new year, both for you and me and the channel. So that means that it's time for the three of us, Ray, Anna and myself, to outline our personal language goals for the year of 2022. How exciting. Now, 2021 was not the greatest year in terms of language learning for myself. I had quite a lot of language related burnout throughout the year and I didn't really make much progress in any of my languages and I'm a little bit disappointed by that. So I have higher hopes for 2022 and I will do everything I can to sort of make those goals and dreams into reality. But just exactly what are those goals? Overarching the entire year, my main focus is to get my Mandarin to sort of a strong, like intermediate stage where I have a decently sized vocabulary that I can use sort of effortlessly, where I can express myself freely. Um, without having to like worry too much about pronunciation or how do I say this? So really getting a good sort of foundational intermediate level. Now I'm studying Taiwanese Mandarin. So that means that I'm using or rather learning traditional characters. This is a little bit of a challenge in a sense where there are not as many resources available for Taiwanese Mandarin, but I still made the decision because, well, they're a lot more aesthetically pleasing, at least to me. And I also have a background, let's say, in Japanese. I'm more familiar with traditional characters than I am simplified. Of course, Japanese does mix a lot of simplified and traditional characters. They're a little bit all over the place. Regardless, I study using traditional characters and so I will continue to do so. So at this current stage, I'm probably about like maybe A1, uh, maybe A0. <laughs> I don't really pay a lot of attention to language levels in that sort of sense, but I mean, it does help a lot when you're trying to like explain or talk about language. So I'm very much a beginner in, in Mandarin at the moment. Like, like I said, I want to get to like an intermediate stage and I don't know if that's like B1 or B2 or in between. As far as it goes, I really want to be comfortable in sort of my knowledge of the language. Now, something that I felt increasingly frustrated about during last year was the fact that I really struggled with letting myself enjoy language learning, where I felt like it was something I'm, I have to do, like a constant nagging in the back of my head, where I should be studying right now, oh, but I don't really want to. Oh, it's, it's like it became a chore, which is not something that I would recommend to anybody. Don't let that happen to you. And so I'm taking sort of all the precautions that I can, um, by which I mean throwing all of the expectations out of the window um, in terms of constant progress or feeling frustrated with where I am. I just want to have fun learning like I used to in the good old days. <laughs> wanting to focus on actually enjoying myself in the moment, enjoying learning languages and learning about language, which I think brings us neatly into what lies beyond Mandarin as far as my goals are concerned. In addition to Mandarin, I will actually be dabbling in some new languages, languages that I've been sort of taking little looks at every now and then, but never really feeling like it's useful, which is the worst thing you could ever do when you're learning languages, considering whether it's actually useful. If you want to learn a language, go for it. And that's what I'm going to do, regardless of if anybody else is doing it, regardless of how difficult it's going to be. So two of the languages that I'll actually be dabbling in as the year progresses is Welsh and Old Norse. Welsh is a little bit out there. I don't know a lot of people who study Welsh. There's obviously Duolingo, which for the time being is going to be my sort of go-to resource. And I have a little bit of a love-hate relationship with Duolingo where I appreciate the accessibility that it gives for languages, but I also feel like it's, I mean, it's a little bit limited, at least in terms of structure, where it's a bit rigid. You're going through everything in bite-sized chunks, so it's 
very digestible in that sense. But there's always this thought in the back of my mind when it comes to Duolingo, especially with sort of less popular languages, let's say. You can never really trust that the information you're getting is completely accurate. Voice recordings are read by a single person, for example. What if their accent or intonation is off? What if they don't actually speak the language that well? What if sort of the vocabulary that they're using isn't actually standard in a sense? Maybe it's regional? Who knows? I don't. I'm a beginner. I've never, like, I've never interacted with this language in my life. So I'm just going to trust blindly in the big green scary bird. You should never, like, study exclusively from one source, especially not Duolingo. But I think it works well as the sort of first touch, first basis, like getting to know the language kind of experience. I think Duolingo works wonderfully for that. I am terrible at sort of keeping streaks. I've never had a streak on Duolingo for longer than like a week. So I'm not saying I'm gonna have better luck or be more consistent this year, but I'm at least going to actively try and use the resources available to me and actually take proper notes because that's another thing. I'm terrible at actually taking notes when I study. I tend to just try and internalize as much as possible and then I'll go back and sort of revise and revisit the same material over and over again until more and more of it sticks. And now another language that I'm getting into this year is Old Norse. I'm thinking that if nothing else it'll actually give me a greater appreciation for Swedish which is my native language and a language that I'm very quick to dismiss that I don't really see the benefit of. I mean, I guess most people don't see the benefit of their native language. I think that's just native bias. Yeah, I'm hoping they will do that, but it's also just interesting because you get access to all of these old sort of sagas and like the Eddas, like these old texts and sort of mythology. You would usually only sort of encounter in translation, whether that's into a Scandinavian language or English or what have you, well, whatever your language is, there's probably a translation available, especially since I think it will also help sort of to see some sort of overview of the development of these languages. So Welsh will be my first Gaelic language and then Old Norse for historical context for Germanic languages. My end goal being to read all of those Icelandic sagas and the, the Eddas, both the poetic and the prose ones. That's something I'm very much looking forward to. As the year progresses, I will be setting sort of quarterly goals as well as these yearly ones that will sort of span the entirety of the year. Maybe I'll take a month here to just randomly delve into a completely different language. Maybe I'll drop one because I'm not making any progress or I don't have enough time. So I'm sort of taking it like a quarter at a time at this stage where this first quarter will be dedicated to finding resources for immersion, which is something that I always Always, I feel like I require, at least when it comes to modern languages, actively used languages, because without immersion, you're going to have a really difficult time actually contextualizing what you're learning into sort of a bigger picture, which is something that I think is very, very necessary when it comes to language learning, where you can't just know all of the little pieces, all the little details. You need to know what the actual picture is going to look like. And it's also just great for not only passive learning, but also just inspiration. We're like, oh man, I, like, I love this movie so much. I can't wait to be able to actually understand it in the native language. Or man, this band is so good. I want to know what the heck these song lyrics are. You know, just that kind of stuff that like sort of drives your curiosity and your passion for the language. And for Welsh, I am going to try and sort of get my head around basic sentence structure, some vocabulary, um, that kind of stuff. And for Old Norse, I haven't really thought of about where to start. I've collected some resources already, but I still haven't really gotten into them yet. I also have both of the Eddas in translation into English, so I'll read through those first. Since my end goal is to be able to read them in the original translation, I said the original translation, but the original versions, I should know the stories beforehand because I've already read some excerpts like from school through university since I'm studying literature at the moment. I don't feel like I'm completely out of my depth, I just don't know what the best way is going to be to actively learn it. 
So that is something that I'm looking forward to figuring out as the year progresses. And now, in addition to these language specific goals, I also want to delve more into sort of the meta linguistic aspect of language, learn more about how language function. I've, I'm basically saying that I'm going to be studying linguistics just for myself, just for fun. And eventually next year, no, not next year, this year, I'm going to actually also take a course in linguistics through my university, which is going to be a lot of fun. I hope, but that also means that I want to get a sort of basic understanding of the subject down before then, just so that I don't feel like I'm completely lost once it starts, because I feel like background knowledge will help me a lot, not only in understanding linguistics as a subject, but also to further like contextualize and inform my language learning. And now, if you're not already a member of the Gladly Global Study community, you can find a link in the description down below. It's completely free to join and you'll have access to lots of great resources, 24 hour open study spaces where you can also chat with and study together with other language learners. Everybody's wonderful if you have any questions about the community, if you have any language specific questions you want to ask, then please do go ahead and just join and well, it's an open forum, you can just ask away and we'll have answers for you. Either Ray, Anna and I or other members of the community. It's a really, really friendly space. We like to claim that it's the friendliest language space on the internet and we hope that you'll agree. So we'd love to see you in the server. I don't think I have to tell you what to do on the YouTube. You click the subscribe button to subscribe to our channel, get notified whenever we post new videos. Also click the little bell next to it to make sure that you're definitely getting notifications whenever we do post new content. Like this video if you enjoyed it and tell me all about your language goals down in the comment section. And I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.